everybody how's it going so let's go ahead and do the scf cycle for the hartree fock program so just briefly we have uh we have this hartree fock program it consists of a primitive gaussian class this is how we get the primitive gaussians for basis functions so these angular momentum terms in the primitive gaussian these are all zero because we're using s orbitals now so um, these functions below here are the sort of molecular integrals they assume that we use a primitive Gaussian that is just s orbitals. Okay, so all of these sort of molecular integral terms uh, that are essentially matrices, uh, n basis functions by n basis functions, these are going to be assuming that the primitive Gaussians are just uh, s orbitals. So I just want to make, make sure that's clear. Uh, the electron electron repulsion term, this is actually. Uh, n basis by n basis by n basis by n basis because um, it's got this like two electron term in here. So anyways, um, and the last video we did was this nuclear nuclear repulsion energy. So this was the most recent one. And now what we're going to do is take this and we're going to do the SCF cycle procedure. And this is going to be a two part video. And what we're going to do is when we're when we compute the total energy of our hydrogen uh, H2 molecule, we're gonna then compute a bond association curve. So let's go ahead and just run everything. So you can see, yeah, for this certain hydrogen molecule where the first hydrogen, so the, so we have an H2 molecule, one of the hydrogens is on the origin and the other one is on the origin and is 1.4 bore in the Z direction. So I think in previous videos, I said this was 1.4 angstroms. I apologize, this is a bore. So anyways, uh, what I'm gonna do is we have to set up the infrastructure for our code, so to speak. So I'm gonna copy this and comment it. So basically how it's going to work is like this. Uh, we're going to have uh, create many H2 molecules, okay? Compute electronic energy for a H2 molecule. Um, and then what we're going to do is compute total energy for H2 molecule. I'm actually going to make this just one. So create many H2 molecules, compute total energy for a single H2 molecule, and then uh, collect total energies for all H2 molecules, plot bond dissociation curve. Okay, so let's go ahead and start this and this will be a two-part series here. So the first one we need to create many H2 molecules. So what is our H2 molecule? Um, our H2 molecule is basically right here. Okay, it's a list of basis functions. So it's the 1s orbital on one hydrogen, 1s orbital on another hydrogen. Our, our basis functions are list of primitive Gaussians. Okay, so it's a primitive Gauss, three primitive Gaussians on one hydrogen is going to be, that's this STO3G basis, okay? So I'll go ahead and actually bring this down here. Uh, STO3G basis. All right, uh, let's go ahead and clean this up a little bit. So here is a, here's create many H2 molecules. So the first step is going to be create H2 molecule, right? STO3G basis. So, uh, and you can see here, this is not programmed well. So I'm, I'm a programmer uh, who also has a degree in computational chemistry. And this, this whole thing was not programmed well. It was just made, made to like teach you, te teach everybody how to actually uh, do this and think about these, uh, this hartree fock procedure. So we're gonna go ahead and kind of clean this up a little bit, but not really. So uh, what is an H2 molecule? Well, it's, it's essentially two hydrogen atoms separated by some bond distance, right? So um, what we're gonna need is uh, four molecule cord oh, coordinate in molecule coordinates, right? So for each molecule coordinate in a list of molecule coordinates, we're gonna get a molecule, okay? Now, what I need here is then I need molecule coordinates. This is 
uh, known in organic chemistry as retrosynthetic analysis. So you basically kind of start at the end and work backwards. It's much easier to kind of work going backwards because you have, you have hindsight essentially. Okay, so, so like what I want is I want this to be molecule coordinate. Uh, okay, so this will be molecule coordinate zero. So let's go ahead and put this in. So my each molecule, so here's an example of how I want a molecule coordinate, okay? I want molecule coordinate to be like this, 0 0.0, 0 0.0, 0 0.0, 0 0.0. So that's the first hydrogen. And then the second hydrogen is going to be like this. It's going to be some distance, right, in Bohr. So this, this list of lists is a molecule, okay? And so molecule coordinate 0 is just always 0. And this molecule coordinate one is going to be the the stretched or the hydrogen that is displaced, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. Then I see that we kind of have it down here like this. Zero. Okay. So this is molecule coordinate. So molecule coordinate is going to be this. It's going to be an, another list, and it's going to be this kind of situation, but it's going to be one of these hydrogen molecules for distance in distances. And then I have to make distances now. So distances is going to be basically a list of bond distances. So um, I times 0 0.1 for I in range uh, five, let's do 31. Yeah, so let's print distances here just to see what it looks like and I'll, I'll comment out all of these here. All right, so let's go ahead and print it. So you can see these are the bond distances and these are in bore. So I'm gonna go ahead and inline comment in unit equal bore. Okay, that's that's the atomic unit, atomic unit of position. You can see here we get these kind of internal representation of the data. So let's let's round it to three decimal places. Okay. All right. So this is this is good distances and then molecule molecule coordinates um, should be just a a list of list of two uh, arrays sort of. So for molecule coordinate and molecule coordinates, let's go ahead and print. Uh, I think I have two tabs here. Print. Let's print molecule coordinate. All right. See what we get. Yeah. So this is the first. The first hydrogen molecule consists of two hydrogen atoms at these coordinates. Right. So that looks good. So let's create our H two molecule then. Okay. That's step one. And there we go. So we have molecule. One thing I think we're going to need is we're going to need number occupied orbitals, because we are going to do this restricted Hartree-Fock framework, so it's just one, one occupied orbital. Okay, then what we're going to need to do is we're going to uh, compute SCF energy. So this rule will give us the electronic energy, and then compute total energy, this is SCF energy. Oh, okay, let me let me let me use electronic energy plus the nuclear nuclear repulsion energy. Okay, then we're going to need to collect total energies, and then it's just plot. So that's actually out of here. So this will be plot plot bond dissociation curve. Okay, so I just need to get a list here of total energies. Okay, uh, so what will this be? This will be import mat plot lib dot pi plot as plt. Let's go ahead and set the um, so plt dot x label will be equal to bond bond distance, and I want it to be an angstrom, right? And then PLTY label 
this is going to be total energy and it's an atomic unit so it's going to be in Hartree. So I need to bring these in, okay, and I can sort of get rid of that since I know it. So to compute SCF energy, I'm going to need these uh, molecular terms here. So let's just keep these like this for now. Okay, and then when we get out, we're going to plot bond association curve. So plt plot. So we need we need to do the bond distances. So I'm going to make them a numpy array because then I can just apply a, a constant multiplication to all of them. So if I mp dot array distances, that'll take all the distances in bore. Then I'll multiply them by the conversion from bore to angstrom, and then I want to also plot total energies. Okay. So we're almost going to we're almost in a point where we can test this. Now let's go ahead and and make our term. So we have s to be overlap matrix, right, of molecule. And then we're going to need a kinetic term. We're going to need the electron nuclear attraction. That's VNE, right? Uh, this here is the list of nuclear charges. So let's just make this Z list already. Okay, we got that space, so that was nice. And then let's do the electron electron repulsion term. Now this contains the Coulomb and exchange in it, so we're going to have to sort of separate those. Then we have the nuclear nuclear repulsion energy. I'll call that E because kind of just adding it at the end. Okay, uh, so all of these, let's go ahead and uncomment them. I'm trying to keep these videos around 15 minutes, so I, I don't have like you know massive videos like that first one. So then what I'm going to have to do is uh, electronic energy equals Compute SCF, I'll just say SCF cycle here. So SCF cycle, uh, let me go ahead and, and define it. Okay, so I know it's going to have to return electronic energy. Electronic energy. Hmm. Okay, so we'll put electronic energy equal to zero for now. Okay. And then what I want is uh, molecular terms. Uh, we're going to need SCF parameters, and we're going to need our molecule. Okay, so one thing I can do now is I can have S, T, V, N, E, V, E, E equal to the molecular terms. So let's package these up and put them here. So this is not technically good coding, like I say, because what I'm really doing is I'm using internal variables within the scope of this function that have the same variable name as the global scope. So that's that's not very good, but you know, whatever. Um, okay, so molecular terms. So I'm basically just taking this S, T, V, N, E, and V, E, E, putting them in this list called molecular terms. Let's pass molecular terms to here. I need another one called SCF parameters, and of course my molecule. So Let's do SCF parameters. Uh, we're going to need a tolerance. So let's do 1 E minus 5. That'll be the total energy. We could do norm of the density matrix, which we're going to be using, by the way, but let's not worry about that here. And let's do 30. So 30 would be the max SCF steps. Let's actually do 20. So uh, tolerance, that's a convergence, tolerance, and then max SCF steps. Will be SCF parameters. And then of course we have molecule. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and just keep this like this for now. So basically basically what happens is we come down, we call electronic, we call SCF cycle, it's gonna return zero for electronic energy. We then compute the total energy by taking the electronic energy and then adding the nuclear nuclear repulsion energy, and then we take total energies. And we append the total energy. Okay, and then that should be here. We then use this here. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this and uh, let's kill the kernel. So I don't, because if you don't kill the kernel, what happens is Jupiter has a weird way of keeping old variables relevant. Um, but just kill the kernel and run it all, and we'll see if we have any bugs. 
Oh my god, amazingly we don't have any bugs. So this basically is the total energy in Hartree is a function of the bond distance in Angstrom. Uh, I think this makes sense because basically all we're doing is the electronic energy is zero. And so we just have the nuclear nuclear repulsion energy. And as we increase the bond distance, that energy should go down. Uh, so yeah, I guess we'll stop here for now. In the next video, we'll finish this SCF cycle function. All right, take care, everyone. See ya.